You're listening to Get Real in Real Estate and Business Podcast, where we chat about the ups, downs, and in-between in this industry and business in general. You'll hear experts in the field talk about their business and give tips, helpful advice, self-care, and balancing family and business and some more. Don't forget to subscribe, download, and share. Now let's get right into it. Hey there, welcome back to Get Real in Real Estate and Business Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Gamayo Self. So today we're going to be talking about and continuing on with our conversation on how to get started in this industry. Last week, I discussed some of the prep work that needed to be done, and hopefully at this point, you already checked your state's requirements, and if needed, then enrolled in class, whether online, in person, or a hybrid of mix of both like I did. So what's next is important. There were some things I got right, but a lot I actually got wrong when I was doing my studies. Um, mindset. Mindset and how you approach your studies is top priority as well as self-care. It's something that you will carry on through to every aspect of your life, but let me be the first one to tell you that this industry is, or it can be tough, um, but it's what you make of it and how you roll with it that's going to change everything. And it all goes down to mindset. Um, but that'll be another episode that I'll discuss in the future podcast episode. So when you study, I highly suggest focusing on vocabulary. Now, vocabulary is everything, especially on the test. And let's face it, we're in school to focus solely on passing the test and really not the actual business that is real estate. And that's just to be real with you. Um, so try not to be so overwhelmed and take breaks often, depending on how much time you have within reason during each day or week to focus on studying, make it count. But what I suggest is after about an hour at the most, just pause, get up to stretch, do whatever to take your focus off of the books or computer screen. And then after about 20 to 30 minute break, go back at it. But I do caution you not to spend all your time studying or stressing. To most people, and I know it it was to me, the real estate lingo was like a foreign language that I had to learn and know it well, because that will translate into your, fu- into your future career. So like I said, vocabulary is everything. What helped me the most besides my weekly Zoom calls with my instructor and classmates was prep agent during the week. That was honestly, that was my best investment and it helped me more than I give credit for. And no, disclaimer, I'm not getting paid to mention them, but I will post in my show notes the affiliate link that I have um, if this is something that you may want to add in addition to your school because I highly recommend it. Um, I did the live almost daily webinars, and those are invaluable because it's real time and you get to understand the things you're learning more and you can get your questions answered. But those are the only two things that I did most. And so here's my mistake number one. I bought and paid for different practice test taking sites and books. Truth, when all was said and done, it really was not needed at all. It was, I was doing too much and I ended up burning out right away. That's something you don't want to do, especially because there's a lot of stress going into this. You keep hearing that the test is hard. You keep, well, this may be a new career to some of you like it was to me. And so that's already on your mind as well. And that's what brings me back to the beginning is mindset really got to get our mindset right. Um, If it's going to really make or break you, not just in the studies, but really in the career, in this career, in this industry in general, because it can be pretty cutthroat. Let's just be real. That's just how it is. So um, anyways, I did end up burning out right away. I believe like even within the first couple days. So I do not want that to happen to you. And again, approaching a brand new career and the mental stress on top of that, of just taking a test that you hear is hard. Um, It can really put you over the top. So just stop and focus on your schoolwork, prep agent live webinars, and extra focus, if nothing else, on vocabulary. That's what I did. Prep agents just on the side if you want to do that. But it it did really help me and so many other people actually um, that I'm seeing. So again, take breaks, 
self-care and don't spend all your time in the books. Really don't. So my mistake number two, I was always in the books. Now, if you know me at all and you're listening to this, you will know that that is true. I am a type A personality, meaning I have to have a checklist of everything. I have to check the boxes. No, it is not good. That is something that I have worked through and realized that is just too much. Um, So if you are like me with that personality, pause, take a break. I'm a book nerd. I love books. I love studying. I'm always, you know, doing continuing education. Some of you might be with me on that. If you're not, well, that might even be to your advantage because my type A personality and always be in the books was not to my advantage. So I I personally solely focused on studying and it took up lots of my day. But again, when all was said and done, it was unnecessary time spent that I could have honestly been doing other useful things and it didn't, it just wasn't necessary. It did not help me um, during, during the school time. I believe it was like 12 weeks and it did not help me on the test really. And so don't, overwhelm yourself and spend that much time. Just don't. Um, And that's the basics for studying time to prep for the test. I mean, that's just kind of the bit, some of the major mistakes that I did I wanted to share with you and some of the basics just to get you started for studying. So anyways, let's fast forward to when you're done with school and you've selected your test or scheduled your test. With test day approaching, there are some things you might want to consider. Like, did you get your fingerprints done at the test center before, or are you planning on taking it at the test center after you've passed your test? Because let's say it, you're gonna pass your test, right? Um, Let's start with that positive mindset. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because if you're going to wait, then you also expect to wait about four to six weeks to begin to even get started in the actual field of things. So just just to let you know, it does take a little bit longer time to process that. So you may be delayed um, if you're starting your career. And if you were anything like me, again, checking all the boxes, I did it months in advance just because as soon as I passed the test, I wanted to get started right away. Uh, but again, it's 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 you, whatever feels good for you, um, whatever pace, there's no right or wrong. That's just up to you. But but really also, I would start to interview brokerages about three to four at least, but I'm going to admit this. So I had one in my mind already and I interviewed and already chose in my head where I wanted to hang my license. And now, honestly, I can say I'm so very happy with my decision. It was the best, best decision and really Um, I see my future here for many, many years. So I'm very excited and happy with my decision. But it's all up to you where you want to be, what you feel comfortable with. I would caution, though, to look somewhere uh, where there is mentoring, where there's education and coaching. Listen, the worst thing, in my opinion, what you can do is finally pass your test. Be all excited Then you choose a brokerage only to be left to yourself and then what? It's kind of like I passed the test, now what, right? There's so much more to this industry than what you're learning in class or online. Even on YouTube channels, podcasts like mine or anything like that, there's so much more that's just not talked about, real life stuff. And so when I pass the test on the first try, I might add, don't feel bad if you don't. Just take your time and usually the answers are in the questions. And of course, if you know your vocabulary, then there you go. You are already off to a good start. That's why I can't stress enough. Know your vocab. Now, it's what's after the test that matters, and that's why choosing a brokerage that will help you to succeed and get you off to the best right start is crucial to your success. Statistics show that only a small percentage of agents stick around in their first year, The majority of them don't stay. Don't be a part of that small group. That's why choosing the right brokerage group is crucial, and I can't stress that enough to you. So I'm going to leave off there, and then next week we'll finish up this series of getting started in real estate. Until then, keep a good, strong, but calm mindset, breathe, and pause during studies, and don't forget self-care, and start thinking about interviewing brokerages and maybe even getting fingerprinted prior to taking your test to ensure you can get started in your career right away. Remember, real estate investing, buying or selling is not just about business. It's about life, family, and home. Until then, see you next week. 
So stay tuned for next week's episode and thank you for listening. If this has helped you in any way, please show the love and share, download, and subscribe. Reviews also help me to reach more people and get this podcast out and share the message. 